Uh, this is the uh, online auction for Jimi Hendrix's 1964 Fender Stratocaster. This is the page in the catalogue here. Um, the auction is live online and the uh, lot is lot 125. It's uh, 8 o'clock in the evening here in Sweden right now. Um, the auction started at 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific time, um, which was uh, which you can see here, 10 a.m. April the 1st, which that's Pacific time, um, and uh, that was 6 o'clock. So it's been going an hour. Um, I've been sort of watching the earlier items as they come up, various memorabilia. Um, uh, and um, things seem to be going um, for a little bit under the estimates. A um, number of things have sold below estimates, so obviously those are things which haven't had reserves on them. Um, the estimate for this uh, authenticated Strat, which uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix's brother Leon has put up for auction, um, the estimate is four hundred to six hundred thousand pounds. That's uh, yeah, roughly it's one and a half dollars to a pound, so that's roughly six hundred thousand to nine hundred thousand dollars. They say with a starting bid of two hundred thousand. Um, whether there's a reserve or not on this one doesn't know, um, uh, but we'll soon find when we find out when we get that far. Um, you can see here the various uh, pictures of the guitar um, in its case. The uh, spring cover is off at the back with the three springs in. The head stop there. Uh, the back of the neck. Quite a lot of play uh, on the back there. I don't know where a lot of that's been put on. I mean, it's, it was given to Jimmy's brother in 1968, and it's a 64 Strat, so. Uh, um, and we did the early tours um, with the experience with this guitar. And it was in, in his dressing room when they played Seattle for the first time. Obviously, when they'd made it, the picture here um, backstage. I guess this is backstage at the gig in question. Whether this is Leon, uh, his brother or not, I don't know. Um, it's the front and the stretcher caster. See, uh, this obviously is all online, um, but. Uh, I planned, I, I, it just occurred to me that as you could do it live, I may as well do a screen capture and see how this goes. The last auction I covered on my YouTube channel, um, I actually live streamed it um, back in 2009, um, and that was in London, and there was a 1959 burst um, for sale, the video of that's up there. Uh, the reserve on it was about £125,000 and it didn't sell. The bidding got to about 100 in the room. I mean, we were there when, whether the auctioneer was just doing a good job of taking bids off the wall or not, I don't know. Um, I don't know these auctioneers, I've not come across Ted Owen and Co before. Um, they do a lot of memorabilia auctions looking around their sites. Their site. Um, and uh, we'll see how, how this goes. Um. Uh, this is lot 55. It's a signed um, photograph of Nelson Mandela, his first official um, visit back to Robin Island by the photographer Jürgen Schardberg. Um, the estimate six to seven thousand pounds. It's currently got a bid in the room of three thousand six hundred. The auctioneer calling final warning and online bidders uh, hurry up. Um, the last few lots signed by Mandela, a pound note, and uh, uh, yeah, whatever the other one was, um, didn't didn't actually reach their reserve. Um, they were much less expensive than this one. It'd be interesting actually to see. Uh, it looks like this one isn't going to hit its reserve either. Um, it's on the final warning. Oh no, here we go again. Look, um, competing bid. It's 
just by way of uh, I'm watching the auction live to get an idea of the atmosphere in the room there um, you can see over here on this side of the thing in, in before uh, Jimmy's guitar there are a number of uh, lots related um, This lot here is an overcoat that he wore in 1967. Um, there's the estimates turn after 4,000 on that starting bid of 1250. Um, we're a long way off that. That's lot 123. Next one after that is the one before the guitar, uh, um, crushed velvet green trousers. Um, wearing them. Uh, what's that? That's estimate three to five grand starting bid fifteen hundred. And that then is before the, the guitar. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how those two Hendrix related items go before the guitar. Um, uh, still bidding on this now. That was that long little pause and now it's going again. Four one at the moment. Four three four three fifty. Um, final warning is about to close. Fair warning about to sell. It says. Um, there we go. If he's saying fair warning about to sell, he obviously is. Uh, well, that's. Thirty percent ish below the bottom end of the estimate. Uh, buyer's premium is twenty point five percent. This is interesting. You see, sometimes an auctioneer will um, accept the bid at his own discretion um, and knock the difference off his buy the buyer's premium. Uh, so. Uh, that's if depending on how the auction's going um, and he may then sort of say forego 10% of the buyer's premium just to do the sale it doesn't affect obviously what the uh, what the seller gets that way well after that little spiel there about um, auctioneers have the discretion to accept bids, you know, below a reserve if it's within the buyer's, you know, if he can adjust the buyer's premium to get him home. Uh, it didn't happen on that Mandela thing. You can just see it, it was actually past, uh, right now, uh, here past. So I'm not sure what the bidding in the room got to, but but uh, it was, well, it was approaching five thousand when I. I had to just go and see what was going on up there, elsewhere in my house here. Um, so, anyway, that's interesting. It's a printed Winston Churchill. That was sold for £800. Um, that's only photograph, six to eight hundred. And it's sold for 800, right, okay. So, um, let's just go to the auction up here. Right, here we go. This is the Hendrix stuff has just come up. Uh, lot 122, pink satin jacket. Uh, you can see the reserve here, 3 to 6,000, asking. 1500 and uh, at the moment no bids. Doesn't look like he's even got a bid on the book because um, anyway, we're waiting for that. I'm just, I was just watching another video on YouTube, which is Ted Owen, who's this auctioneer, and Mick Fleetwood, the drummer in Fleetwood Mag, who have a joint car auction, Fleetwood Owen Auction House. 
and they were just talking about selling um, John Lennon's white Mercedes from 1971. Uh, anyway, let's see, here we are. There's uh, bid in the room 1200. So, room bid of 1200, and down here you've got a competing bid of 1275. It's interesting, the internet bids tend to come up on this readout before um, this real time bid down here. So he's uh, shooting off a bit, final warning, a lot passed, so that lot didn't sell. Right, so here's the overcoat worn by Jimmy. He's asking for 12.50 in the room, estimate 2.5 to 4,000. Uh, there's a room, a bid in the room of 7.50, that's probably off the wall with the auctioneer trying to get them going. Competing bid 12.50, competing bid 12.75, oh the room bid's not catching up here, 11.25, 12, oh right okay that's going up now. Alright we're off to the races by the look of it, um, 18.75, what's coming through here now can't tell whether the auction is going nuts sort of taking bids off the wall here just to try and get it up towards uh, the reserve or not here we are second warning please hurry final warning about to sell he says hurry up online bidders Bid in the room of 1900. 1875 showing up here, so I don't know if that's another bid that's come in. So it might. So I've just logged in as a guest to get this feed, and uh, it says they're audio not available. I don't know if you're actually registered to bid. If you can uh, then hear what the auctioneer is saying. Final warning, this lot about to close. Bid in the room of 1900. Estimate two and a half to 4000, doesn't say what the reserve is. Sold. So that last lot sold. This is 1875. So here we go. The green crushed velvet trousers. Jimmy's trousers here. Um, there's a photograph of some album art or a promo shot showing uh, Jimmy wearing these. Um, so room. 16th. Oh, here we are. We're off to the races here on this one. 1850. That's nearly $3,000. Moving 1950. Getting up towards the bottom end of the estimate. Oh, two thirds of the way there. half past ten now here in Sweden. This auction started at ten o'clock uh, Pacific time. Um, ten o'clock Pacific time, that was six o'clock British summer time. And we're an hour ahead of that here in Sweden. And these are racing up now. Two seven fifty. An expensive pair of trousers. First warning, bid in the room of 28. Second warning, fair warning about to sell. About to close. About to close. Passed. Didn't make the reserve that one. So here we go, now here's the big one, that's what we've been waiting for, 
Jimmy's 1964 Fender Strat given to his brother in 1968 when Jimmy played his hometown Seattle. Opened £200,000 asking, that's like $301,000 with an estimate of £400,000 to £600,000. In the room, £200,000. Rasmus, can you take that away? Daddy's recording. Yeah. Oh, here we go, off to the races. Without being able to see the auctioneer, it's impossible, obviously, to tell whether these are coming off the wall. And he's just trying to sort of tease out a bid from the... Um, the room or online. Here we go. Commission bid there, two hundred and sixteen thousand. So uh, that's a bid that they've got on the books for a client. $325,000 with a 20% buyer's premium. First warning, please place your bid. Bear in mind that some of the press was talking about a million for this guitar. I guess they meant a million dollars, but um, We'll see what happens, but um, it looks like this. And this has got a very low reserve, may not sell. Although there have been a few other lots where it's gone very quiet and he's asked for people to hurry up and bid and give him a fair, fair warning. Okay. It's going to close and here we are. First warning, please place your bid. Well, that's the second first warning. Room bid two sixteen thousand and that's saying live auctioneer. So whether that's a commission bid or some bidding on the phone. Interesting. This. Oh, I think a 64 Strat would go for 30 or 40 grand ordinarily. So I don't think that's a bad bid at all. But looking at the estimate, I may not make the reserves. Good morning, please hurry. And if I was. Uh, Leon Hendricks, I'd be more than happy to take that much money for this guitar. <laughs> and I, you know, I personally wouldn't pay that kind of money for for a Strat full stop. Um, what these go for when they haven't got this sort of uh, memorabilia status. If 
that's real hard folding cash that someone's offered to buy that and that is a bid I think I would go for the folding <laughs> Final warning, this lot is about to close. stage you've got to say there can't be much interest in this because all those bids coming in at increments of a thousand a pop if you were interested at that kind of level then it would be going up so I'm guessing there's very little interest in this guitar at this kind of money Ah, phone bidder line is down, please wait. Well, that's interesting. That's very <laughs> That was a bad day at the office if you're an auctioneer and you really have got bidders on the phone and the uh, the switchboard has gone down. Very interesting. I mean, it is an iconic guitar, there's no two ways about it. And Jimi Hendrix is an incredibly important rock guitarist, it goes without saying. It's just, you know, it's clearly a fabulous uh, innovator and contributor to, you know music generally, let alone the genre that he sort of excelled in, the sort of blues rock stuff. But um, obviously Guitar Centre aren't bidding on these sorts of things these days and they pay the big bucks for the Clapton guitars that sold, which is uh, the red ES335, the cream guitar. Um, the red ES335 played in cream, and, and then the, the black Strat as well. Um, I think they went in the $900,000 range, but that, those were crazy days when people were paying that kind of money. Um, and whilst there were crazy prices being paid, um, at the height of the guitar thing in, in the 2007-2008 uh, and of course came the financial crash and, and uh, whilst there's been a bubble in bonds and equities um, which personally I think is bursting as we speak uh, you know this sort of craziness I don't think it's really sort of got there again um, about a year ago some sort of trophy art sort of went for some record prices you know, record prices historically like that, that kind of thing kind of happens when you're, when you're in the middle of the sort of bubble the financial markets are in uh, Some people believe in this the vintage guitar market. I must confess, I'm I'm not a believer myself. I'm interested, and I'm interested to see, you know, what happens with this. Um, I 
I started watching this with the possibility at the back of my mind that it could go for crazy money because you you know you can never tell with these sorts of things. Um, then of course these things the one swallow doesn't make a summer. You know, even if it did go for incredible money. Um, the guitar market's been distorted in the past with, with uh, you know, very keen kind of newish collectors driving up prices. Um, there was a famous collector in the 80s, his um, name escapes me at the moment, did an album called The Blue Guitar, he commissioned a load of blue archdock guitars. Um, and the weight of his money sort of moved, you know, what they call the guitar market. Uh, I've done a lot of reading into this sort of collectible, collectible business, you know, um, there's actually quite a lot of, of academic stuff on collecting stamps, uh, and it's conspicuous consumption gone mad really, I mean that's what it is, it's completely irrational, but um, anyone that's familiar with the work of Torsten Veblen, um, uh, you know, it's this, the same theme just in our our time, if you like. He was writing at the sort of fin de siècle, you know, the end of the 1800s, beginning of 19th, you know, end of the 19th, you know, 20th century. Um, and he wrote a book about the leisured classes and uh, the conspicuous consumption and craziness that went on with them competing with each other um, and you know, guitars is sort of run through with that sort of thing as well, guitar, guitar collecting um, you know, and all that said and done you know, being a great fan of music and a great fan of Jimi Hendrix you've got to say this is a you know this is an important piece of Sort of rock history, and you know, you'd expect to see it in a museum, or you know, hopefully, then still played out of whatever well, the collection it's in. Um, but uh, yeah, you've got to say, four hundred to six hundred thousand pounds in. Even for Jimi Hendrix connected stuff, I don't think it would ever make sense, but um, in fact it doesn't make sense, but, but uh, oh, so sorry we played, patient, the phone bit of line is down, please wait, that really is quite remarkable. you get a line fixed in London at uh, quarter to ten at night? People have mobiles as well, so you ring them back on their mind with mobile, wouldn't you? get to ring mobile telephones and give them to the people taking the, the online bids. Sorry, please be patient. Maybe they're really on the phone to Leon Hendricks kind of saying, well, it ain't going so well, but we have got a real bid and it's $325,000. What do you want to do? <laughs> Anyway, we'll see. Let's see what happens. Sorry, please be patient. Now we've got that plain old please be patient.
Apologies, there will be a 10 minute break. Well, this is all very good, uh, very good stuff. Yeah. Attention, we'll see what happens when we come back. It may well ease all my words and it may race ahead. I say I think that is a very good price for that guitar in this market um, and I would take the money and run um, I, I honestly do think the kind of prices that those Clapton guitars were in for um, a history. Yeah, there are plenty of people that can afford this kind of money to, to buy this sort of stuff. Um, but it it depends in who whose hands these things are. I mean, this is in the hands of Jimi Hendrix's brother, um, and. If it was in the hands of a, a collector already, um, you know the cynical side of me says we will probably get more money. Um, and that said, um, they bid prices up on things to you know to try and unload other stuff if you like I mean I, and this is the cynical side of me now because I, I happen to think that uh, I, well I do actually think all markets are rigged um, and uh, the guitar market is eminently riggable because it's actually quite small I and mean, they are markets had loads of scandals um, but the guitar market is such a small market um, and with the weight of money uh, potentially that could go into it it's it's very riggable um, and uh, I mean my view here is that that is a very good price as I've said and we'll see when they come back from their break whether or not the bidding does start to race up. But it may well do. I mean, I, 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 um, as I say, I mean that's that, that's more than a possibility. Um, I'm part of a discussion group on LinkedIn called the um, Vintage Guitars Collectors and Players, whatever. Um, and I put a link to this auction in there. Um, I'm not that popular with Tommy who runs the group because uh, I'm a, a reformed capitalist. I don't actually believe in capitalism anymore and uh, it's not a popular view with with, uh, with, with, with the, the guy that runs the group who's, who's in the financial business. Um, uh, I mean I don't bear any ill will or anything. Um, I, people are free to believe what they like and you know? it doesn't bother me if people don't believe in the same stuff that I believe you know? and you know, why it should work the other way I don't know um, except you know, some people don't like you to sort of speak your mind quite fully because it might tar them with the same brush I suppose but hey I mean uh, freedom of speech and all that and at the end of the day it's, I mean, it's just guitars and it? it's not it's not important you know it's a hobby um, it's more important to some people than others because they throw more money at it in a speculating kind of way and uh, uh, but that happens on, on everything. Ten minute break. Yeah. 
five minutes, I suppose. Aha, we're ready to proceed. Cool. First warning, please place your bid. We need bid two sixteen thousand. Second warning, please hurry. So that bid there is still that one at the top, you can see 216,000 live auction here. So that's uh, a commission bid that they've got on the boards. Final warning, this lot is about to close. sold in the room so that did sell for 216,000 uh, pounds sold for terms of to live auctioneers which I am assuming means a client of them so let's just uh, have a think about that then the estimate was 400 to 600,000 the starting bid um, was 200,000 and sold for £216,000 so I wonder if that break was them talking to Leon Hendricks saying look it is a really good price which I think it is personally um, and uh, there they are sold in the room £216,000 or actually sold for a, a, a bid left on the books um, there we are well, that, that was quite uh, quite exciting in its own way. Quite exciting in its own way. <laughs>